What's up, YouTube? So before we get started with this video, on first take, they're going to be going over the game from last night with the uh, Golden State Warriors versus the Houston Rockets. Uh, the Golden State Warriors won 106 to 104. So let's see what they have to say about this. The fact of the matter is, is that when you are James Harden and you had some of the taller guys in your face contesting three-pointers and literally playing your left hand, literally tilting to the side to make sure that they were on your left hand, Ultimately, it got to a point where James Harden is like, I got to go to the hole. I got to go to the hole. I got to make baskets for other people. I got to make baskets for myself. So he's always going to score. But in order to beat the Golden State Warriors, particularly if you're the Houston Rockets, you've got to be able to make shots from three-point range. Yep. And when so pretty much uh, James Harden got locked down. I mean, that's all it is. At the end of the day, he got locked down. We ain't shooting no threes. And whatever you do, try to throw up. It's going to be contested heavily. Anything you're going to do, you're going to have to get everything in the paint. So basically they did the same thing what they did him last night is what they did to him uh, in the playoffs last year. So let's keep going. They go up against Houston. They know that they're going to put length on James Harden. They're going to strive to turn him into a two-point scoring, a two-point scorer, and ultimately that will detrimentally affect the Houston Rockets offense. That's exactly what happened last night outside of Boogie Cousins with his passing ability, not just the scoring, hitting 11 and 16 shots, but his passing ability as well. And, of course, Clay. Uh, so, Stephen A., why do you want to talk about um, Cousins' passing ability? So, go by, you guys, go back and look at the game on YouTube and see uh, Cousins' passing ability to uh, Steph Curry. Watch that miraculous pass he did to Steph Curry uh, almost on the sideline in a corner. Go check out that pass that uh, Boogie sent to Curry. It's, 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 it's a, a remarkable pass. So, guys, go check that out. Uh, let's keep going. Thompson. It's Clay Thompson. This is what I'm talking about right Look. here. They go on the road in Houston without KD and win. Mere Look. bag of shells. Boogie Mere was... Bag. So, another key thing is all this happened... And Houston was running on all cylinders, like I've said before. There was no excuses. They had everything going their way. They had all their players. They had an MVP candidate. They're at home. Golden State, away. They don't have KD. And still put it down. Still put it down. What, Clay got 30 points? Boogie got, what, 20, 27 for a season high? Curry, 24? So, I don't know. You just... Do the math on that. So let's keep going. Excellent, particularly early in the game. And you could see how playing with a guy with a five like that helps Steph. Nothing's clogged up. They can play five out. Boogie can hit the three. Boogie can get the ball in the post and move it and make the right decision. He's a very cerebral player. So that was all working for Golden State. And yet, and yet they didn't have Durant. But again, Boogie ain't going to give you 27 every night. And they needed him to. But see, he might not give you 27 points every night. But he gave us 27 points when he was needed. When he was needed. So the whole rest of the season, Houston was running shop. They were running the table on Golden State. But when it starts to count, when it starts to count, Golden State gets it into gear without one of their MVPs or without one of the league MVPs and Kevin Durant. So just imagine when it's playoff time and they're running on all cylinders, it is full speed. It's all or nothing. Win or go home. Let's keep going. Without KD, and yet there it was a one possession game. And Harden again wasn't hitting threes. And you bring up a good point about making him hit twos. Like there was a rare mid range jump shot sighting from James Harden last night, which is that. So, what that is, Max, they're taking him out of his game. That's all that is. They're taking him out of his game. You watch film, we see what's going on with that. He's been taken out of his game, and that's exactly what you want. And also last year uh, uh, during the playoffs when they played Golden State, Harden was missing a lot of threes. As a matter of fact, I think that he missed like 13 threes in a row along with getting locked down. So it's just choke city for James Harden when it comes to that point. When it comes to that point, it's locked down city. So let's keep going. Actually, like news. Harden hit a mid range. What's going on? But something's wrong with the Rockets. But it's true. It was in, it, it was it, it indicated that they were defending the three. Nevertheless, Harden has to hit it. Like, 
Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Well, what do you want him to be, Michael Jordan? Yeah. What do you want him to be, Kobe Bryant? Yeah. He of course, you get one of their best players. I know there's Chris Paul there, but you get Harden. He's going to let him get his point. He's going to get his points, make him earn it. But you take care of him and have everybody else put in work. That's not as good as he is. So let's keep going. Doing things in the regular season that no one's done since then. Why can't you do it when it matters most? And not that this is a playoff game, well, but why, well, let this me is ask against the team. Uh, this may as well be a playoff game. This may as well be a playoff game because this is going to set the tone for when they see each other in a month and a half or two months. So let's keep going. I have let to me, see you in the playoffs. Retort. Let me ask you this question. Why does he have to hit it? How come he can't facilitate others hitting it? Eric Gordon. Because Hardy is supposed to be the one that's the MVP candidate, right? So you expect me, you want to run for being the MVP? You're supposed to be the MVP? People are talking about you being the, the, the most valuable player in the league, but you're depending on someone else to do it? You're supposed to be the one hitting those, hitting those shots. Let's keep going. Shot three of seven from three-point range. P.J. Tucker shot one of seven from three-point range. The point is, regardless of what you want to say about James Harden, James Harden did shoot eight of 11 from two-point range. Mm -hmm. He was off with his threes, just like he was off in game seven last year. But yep. if Trevor Ariza doesn't go 0 for 12, 0 for 9 from three-point range, could we potentially be talking about a different story? Of course we could. Mm -hmm. So if James Harden has the ability to get into the lane, cause, you know, create attention, and kick it out to other cats, Supposedly, they can hit those threes. Why does it always have to be Harden? How come I, they can't yep. hit those threes? Uh, listen. Because that's what happens when you are the MVP. It all falls on you. You can hit those threes during the regular season. What happened? You were hitting your threes before. All of a sudden, now it starts to get real and it turns into choke city. Oh, well, now I need someone else to hit those threes. I need someone else to start dropping buckets. Let's keep going. I think that's an excellent question, and it gets right to the heart of the issue. He can't. He does have teammates. He should trust them. They should be able to can open threes when he gets them those looks, or even when someone else does, like CP3, or they get them for themselves. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when it comes down to it, he is going to have to hit his threes if they want to beat the Warriors. Because everyone in the universe, including me, Stephen A, acknowledges the Warriors are the more talented team. If both teams play as we are accustomed to seeing them play, the Warriors will win. In other words, the Rockets are the team that need that special and performance from their best player to do it. And Stephen A, what I'm saying is, in the regular season, Harden's better than LeBron and Steph and everyone, right? That's why he wins the MVP. He has to do it in the playoffs, too. If he does, they can win. If he goes two for 12, they can't. Max, the fact of the matter is I disagree with you. Because let's say, for example, they shot 41 threes last night. They made 11. What if James Harden had only taken six threes? But the other 35 came from elsewhere. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that if James Harden is efficient enough offensively, but you're getting the contribution from others, remember, P.J. Tucker can hit corner threes. Gerald Green hit three of five threes, all right? Eric Gordon can hit threes, all right? So you've got CP3 can hit threes. Austin Rivers can hit them on occasion. You've got people on your squad who can hit threes. So you being fixated on James Harden hitting the threes, I'm saying to you, if James Harden averages 30, all right, but he only attempts five or six three-pointers, don't tell me that's going to be the reason Houston loses. Well, other dudes can stay. Well, other dudes need to step it up too, but the fact is he's supposed to be the MVP. You're supposed to be the number one guy on our team. So you're supposed to be front-running. If you score 30, but we need 40 or 50 from you, then that's what you need to do. And as far as setting up for who shoots how many threes and who does this or that, that goes into coaching. That goes into setting up plays. That goes into setting up what's going to happen. That goes into a game plan. That's going to go into coaching. So let's keep going. D'Antoni's got him on there for a reason. How Anybody much did they lose by last night, Stephen? If you're on the floor, you can hit some threes. How much did they lose by last night? I watched the game. Time and time and time. Don't go by that. That's deceptive. I watched the game from start to finish. They were Me up too. consistently by 10 to 12. But then the Rockets made a run. Points. So what Hold on, Max. So the first half, the Rockies weren't winning at all. At no point were the, uh, the Rockets winning during the first half. And for only about two minutes in the third quarter, 
Was Houston winning by probably no more than five points? And all of a sudden you want to say something like that's something big? Sure, they only, they, the, the key word is they, they won though, Max. They won the game. It doesn't matter about how many points. It doesn't matter if it's one point or 50 points. The fact is Golden State won the game and they didn't even have one of the best players. So don't try and go over there with that, Max. Let's keep going. I'm saying to you, but then the Rockets made a run late. What I'm saying is, go, Golden State, Golden State took its foot off the gas. Uh, well, and I what mean, did Clay Thompson say after the game? Well, look, Stephen oh, A. Oh, whatever. Oh, it was a two-point game. I'm so, the so you said, but I'm let me answer the question. Your, let me answer I'm your the question. We're let me answer basketball. your question first. You said, what if James Harden only shot oh, six threes? Now you want to answer my question? Let's say, let's say James Harden only okay. shot six threes. Then I'm saying, hit three of them instead of two of them. You win by a point, according to the score. My point is, you got to can those shots. If you're the best player in the world, hit the shots when it matters most. I can't believe this is controversial for you. And my and my response and my response and my response is that makes no sense when you can take into account the fact that we just acknowledged if Trevor Ariza hit some shots in Game Seven, they may have won. I'm saying he's not the only one. I want to stop right there. This is this is the crux of the issue, and I'm shocked. This is inconsistent from your point of view about the greatest players of all time, which James Harden is trying to be one of those guys, right? You, yes, it's great to rely on your role players, have confidence in them and everything. But if they're not hitting shots, what would Michael Jordan do? What would he do? On- exactly. What would Jordan do? Take the game over. Take the game over. What would Kobe do? Take the game over. Nobody's doing anything. Nobody wants to take care of business. Fine. Everybody jump on my back. Jump on my back. I got this. I don't even need any help. I don't even need any help. Take the game over. And that's what separates the James Hardens. The Chris Pauls from the Michael Jordans, the Kobe Bryants, and the Magic Johnsons. That's what separates them. When it's go time, can you slit the throat? Do you take your foot off the gas? Or do you burn rubber? Let's keep going. Those circumstances. Sometimes, like it's going, not sometimes, frequently throughout the history of the NBA, it's incumbent upon the best folks. player to make shots You're confusing under pressure. Folks. You're confusing. You're confusing, folks. I didn't say James Harden can't make shots. I said it doesn't have to 